Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and we're back with another Total War Warhammer video. Today we're going to have a discussion about the Demons of Chaos, a much anticipated faction to come in Total War Warhammer 3. The Demons of Chaos are one of the largest factions in Warhammer Fantasy, not because of general units but because of the fact that their roster is made up of four different sub-factions each sub-faction dedicated to one of the four main Chaos Gods. There's a lot of diversity in terms of its faction, and because of this, it's brought a few questions out regarding its legendary lords. More specifically, who will the main legendary lords be? Normally, when a race is released in Total War Warhammer, if it's part of the main game, it will launch with two different legendary lords, and if it's a DLC faction, it launches with around four. This system makes sense, however, I think it needs to have a bit of a change for the Demons of Chaos specifically. So, because the Demons of Chaos have four drastically different sub-factions in their roster, it would be a bit of a shame if the Demons of Chaos launched with just two legendary lords. Each of the Chaos Gods are popular in their own right, they have their own different styles and different forms of warfare. While they have more or less the same end goal in a certain sense, each of the Chaos Gods are so drastically different that it should be represented as such in Total War Warhammer. Let's use a hypothetical here. Say for example, the starting Legendary Lords, if it's just two, would be Skulltaker, a Demon of Corn, and the Blue Scribes, Demons of Zinch. Bear in mind these are pure hypotheticals, nothing's been confirmed. That leaves fans of Sonesh and Nurgle kinda out of the loop at the moment until DLC factions come into effect. It would be likely that we'd still already have access to Demons of Sonesh and Demons of Nurgle, but it wouldn't really feel the same. Again, as an example, think playing as Skulltaker, but also having Demons of Sinesh because that's your favourite roster. That itself would feel a tad strange, wouldn't it? Because you're not really being led by a Demon of Sinesh. The same could be worked around in other forms depending on which Legendary Lord ends up playable. Of course, you wouldn't have access to a full Sineshi roster or a full Cornite roster and so on. It's likely that Creative Assembly would be mixing up the roster to then have extra units dropping in DLC. This is how it worked with the Skaven when they were dropping DLC for them. Long before we had access to Clan Mulder, we already had access to some Clan Mulder units. The same could be said with Clan Eshin or even Clan Scryer. And while the argument could be placed that that's what we had to deal with with the Skaven, it's a tad more different for the Demons of Chaos. Ultimately, the Skaven are very much the same race. They have the same culture, the same aesthetic, and so on. What is different is that the major clans broke off and did their own thing, expanding and excelling at what they were best at. But once again, they all serve the same purpose. They serve the Council of Thirteen, and they serve the Horned Rat. Whereas again, the Demons of Chaos can be seen as their own separate four factions. Each of the Chaos Gods are so drastically different from each other, which means that they are all to be treated a little bit differently. This is not a monogod or undivided argument, this is merely stating that we really should have four different legendary lords, one per Chaos God. Not only would this give players more to play with, as each legendary lord would probably act in their own specific way, but it would make sure that each Chaos God is represented in-game, and would avoid any possible drama online. Yes, some Chaos Gods are more popular than the others. I believe Korn is the most popular Chaos God at the moment in terms of tabletop players, but I could be wrong here, as I myself mostly play as Sineshi Force. Again, if you're a Korn fan and a Korn Legendary Lord is not playable at launch, well, you would be disappointed, wouldn't you? With the same being said for any of the other Chaos Gods. Now, I can see the argument here in a multitude of ways, of course. The first being, wouldn't that take anything away from the other playable races at launch? And to be honest, no. 
Total War Warhammer 3 has been in development for quite some time now as we can imagine. Total War Warhammer 2 launched over three years ago, and since Creative Assembly have stated that there are different teams working on different things, the fantasy team has probably been working on Warhammer 3 for quite some time now, which means that if that's the case, it shouldn't take away from any of the other races at launch. The second argument might be that four legendary characters at launch might be a tad much, and might affect the Demons of Chaos in terms of future DLC content. However, that's not really the case. You see, the Demons of Chaos throughout 8 editions have hundreds of possible characters for future DLC, possibly even more so than any other established race or faction in Warhammer Fantasy. It's also my theory that they might be the biggest one in terms of possible cross-game DLC, considering the fact that the Demons of Chaos show up in the lore for pretty much almost every established race in Warhammer Fantasy. If you guys were sick of the Vampire Count bias in Game 1, or the Skaven bias in Game 2, well, the Demons of Chaos will be very much the same, possibly even more so. In fact, they might even end up with the biggest roster of playable characters by the end of the series. So, with both those arguments aside, it does make sense to have four different legendary lords for this faction at launch. Do you guys think that the Demons of Chaos should launch with four different legendary lords, or do you think that they should keep with the same format of just two? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and let's start a bit of a discussion. I'm curious to see what you guys think, as obviously this is a rather strange faction. Due to the fact that they are four separate factions, it can cause a bit of turmoil in terms of who should really come first. Honestly, I believe that four lords at launch would be the best way to go about this, however I could indeed be wrong. But with that, my friends, we've come to the end of our video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, might I suggest giving the video a like, or even subscribing to the channel, as it really does help us out. In the description section below are various links to different social media platforms, such as Facebook, Instagram, and Discord. Also in the description section is an affiliate link with Element Games, where you could buy loads of hobby-based products, not just Warhammer, for 10-25% to off. Making a purchase using that link and also our special code, which is also in the description, supports the channel at no extra cost to you, which we think is rather cool. A big thank you to our patrons, your support means the world to us, it's amazing that people want to help a small channel like us grow and get to a higher level of content. A big thank you to Gibraltar LUSC, Ryan Birch, Andrew Prince and Okro for subscribing to us at our fame level, you guys are super cool. And a big thank you to Edward Yule, VS Fasan, Aaron Whitman and Shaggy for subscribing to us at our king level, honestly we can't thank you all enough. And lastly, a big thank you to all of you for liking, sharing and commenting on these videos. Honestly, it's because of you guys that the channel has been growing at such a great pace lately, so we can't thank you all enough. But with that my friends, thank you so much for watching once again, and we shall see you all again very very soon. Have a good day.